Welcome to IBM Mainframer, a complete reference for mainframe programmer. In this video, we are going to see vSAM tutorial, introduction. vSAM is abbreviated as Virtual Storage Access Method. It's a way of storing and accessing data. I know you may think, we can store and retrieve data using PS, Physical Sequential and PDS, Partitioned Dataset. So, why do we need another type of dataset? Let me explain, why. In PS and PDS, I can open it and put my data in. And I close it. The data is still there next week. All is good, right? Well, for you and myself. But, what about the applications? Applications generally are not reading blogs, writing novels, scrolling social media. They've got a specific piece of data, that they've got to get to present to their user, or they have got to make an update on a very specific piece of data, in a very specific place. This can be achieved by using vSAM. vSAM gives applications a method of reading and writing data, that makes sense for them. In fact, if you were to try, and open up a vSAM dataset in ISPF, all it would do is tell you, that's of some dataset, because it's not readable by standard methods. So, how does this work? Well, like the other datasets we have talked about, vSAM has records. In vSAM, those records are kept in what's called a control interval and a control interval is a continuous area of storage on DOS-D, and they can be different sizes. So, when an application goes to read a control interval, that specific area of storage gets read into the vSAM I.O. buffer. So, the application can read it. vSAM has four types of datasets based around four different ways, that the applications generally like to consume and record data. They are, ESDS, Entry Sequence Datasets, KSDS. Key Sequence Datasets, RRDS, Relative Record Datasets, and LDS, Linear Datasets. Let's see each type in detail. Key Sequence Datasets, or KSDS. In a KSDS, each record is identified by a unique key. When you write new data, you create a key for it. For example, if this were an automobile assembly line, the index might be a unique vehicle identification number and the data portion holds what features that car is being built with, what color it is, which dealership it's going to, all that stuff. Whenever we want that specific piece of information, we look it up by the key. This is the most commonly used type of vSAM dataset. Entry Sequence Datasets In an ESDS, each new entry goes in right after the last one, and records are referenced by the relative byte address. So if we know the records are 64 bytes each and, we want to reference the first record, the RBA is 0, and for the second, it's 64, and for the third one, it's 128, and so on. Because the records go in one right after the other, and that's their structure, you can't delete a record once it's in there. You can only mark it as inactive. This structure generally lends itself to high performance when data is loaded, and read sequentially. RRDS or relative record data set, is similar to an ESDS, except that the records are referenced by the relative record number, or RRN. This number is how many records down from the first record we are, similar to rows in a spreadsheet. And like a spreadsheet, we can have empty records, we can delete records, we can jump around, or we can go sequentially. Lastly, LDS, linear data sets. These are not used as often but are still helpful when dealing with byte stream data, like logs, or where an application will be managing the data, after it grabs it. Let us see an example, how to choose vSAM dataset types for an application. Let's say I need a vSAM dataset to record data in sequence. And I just happen to know that the program, that processes this data is going to read it in sequence, without skipping around. What type of dataset should I be looking into? The answer is an ESDS, or Entry Sequence Dataset. Because members go in based on when they're recorded, and we have no need to reference individual records by name or relative number, we can make efficient use of an ESDS here. If, you two selected ESDS, you are great. You understood the vSAM concepts well. Now, time to see how to create vSAM? No matter what dataset type you're using, they usually get created using an IBM utility called IDCAMS through JCL. In your JCL, you will specify the cluster. That is the logical representation of that dataset, and all that goes along with it. So, 
In this example here, you can see we are invoking the ID CAMS program in creating a cluster with the name rapid.test.ksds. I know, this is a key sequence data set and not, just because of the name, but, because down here we're specifying the key length. Here it's 6 bytes starting at the 5th byte, byte 4 since we start from 0, of the data record. We need to provide the information for the cluster itself, as well as the data and index of the cluster. In this example, we're also specifying which catalog we want to keep the cluster in. You can also use JCL itself, to create some data sets, in which case you specify the record organization, recorg, parameter. The fundamentals, however, stay the same. So that is an introduction about vSAM. Thank for watching this video. Hope you like it. For more details, please visit our website www.ibmainframer.com.